Hello, everybody. I am going to be learning how to play Rush Duel today. So I figured the best place to start, hopefully, is just the Rush Duel page on my site so that I can learn the rules because Lord knows I can't read a Japanese rule book that will teach me the ins and outs of it. If there is a better place to look, I would love to be told. Let's go to this document, and then anything I learned from this that was not on that page should be on that page. Instead of searches, we have a lot of resource retrieval from the graveyard. I'd be more worried about, like, decking out. I feel like the best effects in this game are going to be things like paying a cost of shuffling three from the graveyard back into the deck or something is going to just be, like, a very beneficial effect disguised as a cost. Maximum of, ooh, that one looks much cooler than the other one. This card looks ridiculous. Like, this thing looks stupid. And it should not be the face of maximum cards. It's probably just the first one or something. This thing looks a lot cooler. <laughs> Especially since, like, the left hand doesn't look like it's obviously part of a maximum summon or something. A deck that reached tier zero at one point and rushed was called Thunder Melo Happy Face which uses its ability to stack the graveyard quickly to pull monsters it needs with retrieval effects, like Thunderbolt, the lightning fire deity. Oh, Melo D, as in Melody. I'm sticking with Melo Happy Face. Melo Happy Face, go to... I'm sticking with Melo Happy Face. I'm just, that's... I'm, I'm, I'm working with it. I mean, we have the IP Masquerina. You know? That's literally just Tongue Face. It's the same thing. So, like, a little bit about me and, like, why this whole thing is happening. Uh, despite every deck anyone has seen me play since the site started, Fusion's actually my favorite mechanic. I think it's, like, one of the most Yu-Gi-Oh things ever. Uh, unfortunately, for, like, 15 years, Yu-Gi-Oh hasn't done Fusion's. Like, they just don't. Uh, I, I've always loved the idea of, like, Gaia the Dragon Champion, where it's literally, like, Gaia riding on the Curse of Dragon. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, the three-headed, like, blue eyes. Like, actually fusing the cards. Um, there's, like, one in particular. Reaper on the Nightmare was so damn cool. Reaper on the Nightmare here. It's a fusion of Spirit Reaper and Nightmare Horse. I'm just going to put him these in the deck. This one was like a dark zombie. They're both dark zombies, but 300 attack, 200 defense, 500 attack, 400 defense, three stars, two stars. So together, they would have 800 attack, 600 defense, and five stars. And this guy attacks directly, and this guy says, if he attacks directly, take a card out of your opponent's hand. And sure enough, the fusion has 800 attack, 600 defense, five stars, is Reaper riding on the horse, says it can't die by battle, Gets destroyed if it's targeted, can attack directly, and if it attacks directly, takes a card out of their hand. It is literally a fusion monster. This is the purest fusion ever made in Yu-Gi-Oh! They have never done it since. This is probably the coolest card ever made. It's so goddamn awesome. And they just, they don't do that. And they get less and less like that the further they go. I remember trying to like figure out like a formula, like, oh, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's got 4,500 because they calculate it by adding the materials together and cutting it in half, and like 9,000 divided by 2 is 45. I was like 10 years old. But this idea of like merging the artworks and merging the effects and merging the stats of the guys together was so, so cool to me. Uh, like my first Nationals hop ever was with Elemental Heroes after uh, Wild Wingman came out, uh, who's literally Wildheart and Avion. Like, they fused them together. It's, it's perfect. Uh, they didn't have effects, so they gave him an effect. But I just love this idea of, like, merging your best guys together. It's something that you just you don't get elsewhere. I don't know of, like, a single Pokemon fusion. I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, you could argue the, like, Gen 8 fossils are, like, fuse-ish, but, like, DNA digivolving in Digimon was always completely whack, and this idea of, like, any Shadow and any Dark makes Wenda, I'm like, I don't like that. I want Wenda to be a fusion of, like, 
any Shadal and Winda, for example, something like that. Alistair's in the right direction, but I still don't like the idea that it's like any light makes Mechava. Uh, I, I like the idea of fusing my two guys to make a guy made from those two dudes. I didn't like Musician King. Lady of Faith and Witch of the Black Forest have nothing to do with Musician King. They lose their effects. The artwork has like nothing to do with anything. I, I also have always wanted like the ability to have a beast warrior. Like Yu-Gi-Oh had that. I wanted to be able to fuse like Marauding Captain and Battle Ox, like a warrior and a beast, and get a beast warrior. And I wanted it to still support or be supported by beast and warrior cards. I wanted to be able to warrior returning alive a beast warrior from my graveyard and still have it boosted by like beast soul swap and stuff, you know? I've always wanted that. So when I first saw this guy and I was like, oh my God, these things are amazing. And I saw that it's a fusion of a fairy and a warrior that made a new type called Celestial Warrior and that the cards say Celestial Warrior, Warrior, or Fairy type monster. And it's like, that is exactly what I wanted in Yu-Gi-Oh like 20 years ago and never got. So it's super, super cool. Uh, as far as like that nostalgia that gets embedded in you as a kid that like you can't escape. Um, very, very long time ago, uh, my grandmother was babysitting me and uh, I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! on a Saturday morning uh, with my new Pharaoh Servant packs and I had pulled Buster Blader in a pack and uh, I was drawing him just on my grandmother's kitchen table when I noticed this little head, head guard thing behind him. This like, I don't, you guys can see my character, right? Yeah. This like pointy thing behind his head. And I was like, hey, that's the same one that Dark Magician has. He's got this like same like pointy thing behind his head. So I made my own little like warrior spellcaster guy that had that like pointy thing behind his head. Uh, he didn't have Dark Magician's hat, he had Buster Blader's hat, but he still had, like, a staff sword, and he was a warrior spellcaster, and I asked my friends if there's such a thing as a spellcaster that, like, a warrior that casts spells, and they told me that those are called paladins, so I named the card Dark Paladin, and, like, probably, I want to say the same day, but it's hard to remember because I was a little kid, but... An episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! aired in Battle City where Yu-Gi literally fused the two cards together and made Dark Paladin on the TV, like, hours after I fucking drew the card. Like, it blew my mind. My little ten-year-old brain fucking exploded. So, for, like, probably close to 20 years now, Dark Paladin's been my favorite card. I literally feel like I willed it into existence. But, uh, obviously... Japanese anime was years ahead. Like, it's none of that. <laughs> but, uh... Like, fusion has always had a special place in my heart. And the idea of, like, merging these, like, types together to make a new type has always been, like, my big want from the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. So this idea of Celestial Warriors is, like, why we are here. Uh, I don't care how bad these cards are. I don't care if this shit is, like, Tier 3... I'm doing it for the sake of doing it. <laughs> so uh, I've now learned how to play Rush Duel. I'm sure I forgot a couple of things along the way, but I absolutely love this. This is the coolest line of text in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! for me. Uh, the only thing this chick does is take a thousand attack off your guy, as long as I'm willing to run this thing, but I'm gonna, so that's fine. Because I've got all kinds of room in my extra deck. Look for you, these cards are very good. I'm gonna level with you, even if they weren't, I'm gonna make them good. I'm Dan, I'll make anything work. Dan, play through a Forbidden Memories where you confuse everything. You, bud, I was so bad at Forbidden Memories because every turn I just fused my whole hand together. <laughs> when I, was, I was like nine playing Forbidden Memories and just something was gonna make Ushioni or I was gonna die trying <laughs> every hand. I played E-Heroes from Cybernetic Revolution. Yeah, Cybernetic Revolution, because shortly after CRV, we got a ban list that murdered the game. 
uh, Yu-Gi-Oh became like unplayable. Uh, everybody's deck died. Uh, what people call like goat format, like six months after that, like they murdered everything. And Cyber Dragon basically ruined the game in addition to that. But um, I built E-Heroes and I played them right up until Stardust Dragon came out. Because Konami said, fuck you and your 80 card fusion deck, you can only have 15 of them now. And that was basically a death march for the way I was playing my deck. Because I literally had three of every fusion monster my deck could summon, and I played three King of the Swamp in the deck. So there was, like, big stack of guys, and I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. Uh, really upset me and made me quit the game for, like, six months. <laughs> By the time I came back, Ancient Prophecy was out. Anyway, for years, I played that E-Hero deck. There's actually a really funny story where I had a... I don't have one nearby. I had a piece of paper, and I wrote down on it uh, recipes. Like, uh, back row destruction is Avion plus Wildheart. Front row destruction is Sparkman plus Clayman. And uh, King of the Swamp can substitute for anyone on the list. Uh, attacking while in defense mode, Clayman plus Burstinatrix, uh, so on and so forth. I just wrote this, like, recipe guide of, like, ingredients and result and gave the paper and the deck to my dad, who drove to Moncton, New Brunswick, it's about three hours from here, and entered a regional, having never read an e-hero card in his entire life. And he won the regional by just consulting the piece of paper, looking for the effect he needed at the moment, playing Polly and just making that, and just reading off this little ingredients list how to play. This was, it was a very long time ago. Yu-Gi-Oh! was much, much easier to play, and you were allowed to get away with just about anything under Upper Deck. But the idea of, like, an archetype was so new that long ago, and, like, having things like 3 e call in my deck and our righteous justice, like... Just punishing really powerful things that, like, people just weren't doing back then. Like, this is still, like, 2005. Even six years from now, people are going to be playing six vanillas in their deck for Rescue Rabbit. Like, we sucked in 2005. <laughs> but uh, just the idea that, like, this, like, 45-year-old man <laughs> reading off, like, a piece of paper or won a regional is so fucking funny to me. And everyone else... Like, his opponent in semifinals had a huge breakdown over it and fucking quit. Vanilla non-legend caps at 16. Okay, Like, I don't honestly see a huge issue with uh, Vanilla, like, even being 1800 when I can so easily summon a level 5. Uh, Cyber Dragon, for example, uh, just like it is in Master Duel is just a free 2100 body and even going first I can just here's my 00, zero vanilla and then just tribute some of the cyber dragon and it's 21 and that's going to wall your vorse raider I saw it was one of the legends like that that seems like a weird thing for them to put a focus on but um eh, whatever semi ruler isn't that like the uh Oh God, I don't remember which one's bottom and which one's top. It's like Uke and Seme or something. Like, this card's name is literally, like, Bottom Ruler, the Dark Summoner. Semeru is to attack. Ukeru is to defend. Characters, cards, and verbs ending in Ru and extending that to Ruler. Okay. So I guess, like, Seme's top, then, because they attack. And then Uke is defend. All right, so his name's just, like, Top Ruler, and he's gay. Got it. And you guys have a good rest of your night, and thank you so much. On the next stream, maybe I'll actually play a rush duel with one of you, if we can. Dueling will probably won't let me. But thank you. You guys were a big help, and I hope you enjoyed.